Welcome back. In this second episode of our video on the Azmat tribe of Papua, we will take you to a glimpse of their culture and traditions. The Azmat tribe's culture and traditions are deeply rooted in their connection to the natural world. They believe that everything in nature is sacred and should be respected, from the trees and animals to the rivers and oceans. As a result, they have developed a complex and highly ritualized culture that reflects their beliefs and values. One of the most significant aspects of their connection to nature is their dependence on sago, which is a staple food source for the tribe. Sago is a type of starch that is derived from the trunk of several species of tropical palm trees. The Azmat people collect the sago from the trunk of the sago palm trees, which can grow up to 10 meters tall. Collecting sago is a labor-intensive process that involves several steps. First, the Azmat people must find a suitable sago palm tree. They look for trees that are at least 20 years old, as younger trees do not have enough starch to be worth collecting. Once they have found a suitable tree, they use a sharp machete to cut down the tree's fronds. This makes it easier to access the trunk of the tree, where the sago is located. Next, the Azmat people use a long wooden pole to poke holes in the trunk of the tree, just above the base. They then use a sharp knife to widen the holes, creating a channel for the sago to flow out. They leave the holes open for several days, allowing the sago to flow out of the tree trunk and into a waiting container. Once the sago has been collected, it must be processed to remove impurities and toxins. The Azmat people typically do this by hand, using a traditional method called, waking. They mix the sago with water and knead it by hand until it becomes a fine powder. They then wash the powder repeatedly with water, removing any impurities and toxins. After the sago has been washed, it is ready to be cooked and eaten. The Azmat people typically cook the sago in a large pot of boiling water, stirring constantly to prevent it from sticking together. Once the sago has cooked for several hours, it becomes a thick, glutinous mass that can be eaten on its own or used as a base for other dishes. The Azmat tribe's dependence on sago is a significant aspect of their culture and way of life. Collecting and processing sago is a labor-intensive process. The Azmat people of Indonesia are also known for their intricate and highly detailed carvings and sculptures. These artworks play a significant role in Azmat culture, serving both practical and symbolic purposes. In this second episode of our video, we will explore the Azmat people's carvings and sculptures, as well as their use in ceremonies. Carvings and sculptures are an integral part of Azmat culture. They are used for a wide range of purposes, from practical items such as canoes and weapons to highly ornate pieces used in ceremonies and rituals. The Azmat people believe that each carving and sculpture has its own spirit, or, wakanam, which gives it power and meaning. One of the most well-known types of Azmat carvings is the Bisi pole. These tall, intricately carved poles are used in elaborate funeral ceremonies to represent the deceased. The poles are often adorned with depictions of ancestors, animals, and mythical creatures, and are considered to be a form of communication between the living and the dead. Another type of carving commonly found in Azmat culture is the canoe prow. These highly detailed carvings are attached to the front of canoes and often depict animals or human figures. Canoe prows are believed to protect the canoe and its passengers from harm while out at sea. The Azmat people also create a variety of sculptures and masks that are used in ceremonies and rituals. These sculptures can take the form of animals, ancestors, or mythological creatures and are often highly detailed and ornate. They are believed to have the power to protect the community and ward off evil spirits. In addition to their practical and symbolic uses, Azmat carvings and sculptures are also highly valued as works of art. Many Azmat artists have gained international recognition for their skill and creativity, and their works can be found in museums and galleries around the world. The Azmat people's carvings and sculptures are an integral part of their culture and way of life. In our third and last episode, 
we will be featuring the rituals often practiced by the Azmat people. We will take a look at their very unique perspective on death. We will also look at some ritualistic practices like mummification and their elaborate funeral rites. Do not miss out and please like and subscribe. See you soon.